mercy and peace be to you from God our Father and our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Dear friends in Christ Jesus, today is the beginning of a new year. In fact, today might be appropriate for me to say Happy New Year to you. And because really on this day, it is a new year in the church. And as a new year, we do really some of the same kind of things we would do just, what, probably about uh, 30 days or so from, from now. What we do is we go, first of all, we look at the past, we look at the present, and then we look forward to the future. We do that in the new year, and we do that in the new year in the church as well. Why do we do that? Because it really helps us to understand who we are and what it means to be God's children and God's children here. You know, first of all, as we, <clears throat> as we really look back, is, is that we have to first see what it was, what, what the past was. You know, as we look back to the past, the very first place we go is back to the original garden. The Garden of Eden with our first mother and father where they were there and they fell into sin. You see, it's there that we have to understand the real plight at which the human, the human existence really has. And that is, is that we are, we are sinful people. In fact, you all are. Uh-oh. Sinners. Gosh, guys, you guys are sinners. Because we're going back to the beginning, okay? We're going back to the game. We have to understand that we are sinners. And w what? I even gave you the hint. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. Because we're sinners, we just sin all the way. <clears throat> but the, the thing about it is, is we really have to do is we have to go back to the very beginning. We have to understand that we're sinners. And that's the reality of it is, is because we do that. We have to understand that we are sinful people from the very beginning. And we have to understand that that is what, what our flesh is. And why do we need to know that? We need to know that because we need to understand the condition of what we're at. We'll talk about that in a minute when we talk about the present. But you know, as we look in it, we are very fortunate to be in the Lutheran church. Because in the Lutheran church, one of the things that we do is we have a set pericopes that we look at. In other words, we go by the lectionary. And as we go by that lectionary, we look at the things that are happening out there. And for us, we have to look at the past. Once we've looked at the past and understand that we are sinners there, we realize that as sinners that we need to have something happen into our lives that's going to change it. And once again, we look to the past. We look to that time at which Jesus came once again. And really, I had a, quite an interesting conversation on, on Thanksgiving. Actually, it was the day after Thanksgiving. We went out to my brother-in-law's house. And while we were out there, um, he is actually a Christian minister. He preaches in the Christian church. And unfortunately, in that church, they don't go by a lectionary like what we do here. What they do is he kind of just picks whichever thing that he wants to preach on that particular day. And that's what he does. And so what he always does, for some reason, when I come in, he always asks me, what are you going to be preaching on this Sunday? <laughs> of course, he hadn't yet figured out what he was going to be preaching on yet. But, you know, I said, okay, well, you know, it's, you know, I'm looking at it. And, <clears throat> of course, this is the time of the year in Advent when we look, <clears throat> we look towards, uh, towards the past, first of all, and we look there in order to see what's happening. And in, in the text that, that came up this year is the text about Jesus' triumphant entry into, into Jerusalem. When he kind of looked at me and he said, well, why would you preach on that? Isn't that Easter? Well, yes, it is an Easter text. But really, when we look at what Advent is supposed to be doing, Advent is a time in which we're preparing for the coming of our Savior as a child in Bethlehem. But we have to know and we have to understand, why is He coming? Well, He's coming because you're just a bunch of... Very good. You're all learning. But you're a bunch of sinners out here. 
And because of that, we need Christ to come to us. And he came to us as a little babe in order to do one thing. And that's exactly what happens in the, in the gospel text. <clears throat> the gospel text, what he does is he takes his triumphant, his triumphant entry into Jerusalem in order to go to the cross to take away our sins. He does that in order that we can be saved from that plight that each one of us have. We all have that disease. We have that plight. We have that plague that's among us, and that is sin. And so we see Jesus going in there, and we start there, because really what it does is it leads us to understand the very first thing that we need to know about Advent. And on the very first Advent Sunday, we always talk about Hope, which is right there in front of you, right there on our, on our banner there, in front of the candle that's lit. Because really Advent is a time of looking at hope. The hope that we have in our hearts. The hope that we have as people that are originally sinners. Because that's what, that's what Adam and Eve had to look to. That was what the promise to them was. They made a mistake and they fell into sin and all of a sudden their world changed. And when that world changed, they were lost. I kind of liked it in Sunday school class. It was one of those things where <clears throat> I didn't come up with this, this illustration really until I was in Sunday school. And I wished I would have had it in the early service. But at least the people in Sunday school, it's really like this. It's this kind of a situation where you have this burning building. And originally we're standing outside of the burning building looking at it. And then what happens? Satan comes to us and says, hey, you need to go inside of there. And so what do we do? Like sinful people, we go in and we start looking around in that. Well, the problem is, is that once we're inside of that building, it's all burning around us and it's all falling. And we're in real danger, aren't we? We're really set out in, into destruction. And that's what sin does, is it puts us into a situation where we're, we're, we're you know, where there's only destruction. There's instruction in front of it, because that's what sin did, is it broke, and it broke that, that relationship that we had with God. And the only thing that we had to look for was death and destruction and the wrath of God. And so here we are standing in there, and the whole reason that Jesus came was, was to give us a way out. He's the one that, as we're standing in that burning building, with, with things just falling down all around us, he's the one that stands at the doorway and says, hey, come this way. This is the way to freedom. This is the way to safety. And that's exactly what Jesus Christ did. He came on that, on that, that he came as a little child in Bethlehem. But for the sole purpose of going to the cross, and that's what his triumphant entry into Jerusalem was about. That's what this whole thing was about was the fact that Jesus was going in and he was going in so that they could give him praise, but with a task to do, and it was to go to that cross in order to hang there and to give his blood for us. And it's there that we see the whole meaning of the Advent season and the whole meaning of Christmas. And it's all about the hope that we have because now, rather than being ch children of wrath, what he does is he makes us... That's absolutely right, children of God. And that brings us into the present, doesn't it? That helps us to see in the present because what it does is it shows us who we are now. And see, that's what God, Jesus did for us. That's the thing, is that he came into that city of Jerusalem as a king, riding on a colt in a meager way, but yet he was the king that was coming to us in order to make us his own, to make us righteous, to make us, to make us his. And for those churches out there that don't realize that, you know, you know, it's, it's just, you know, it's singing Christmas carols is what it is. It's looking at a season. But see, for us, when we understand that that's what it's about, then what we can do is we can look at it with hope, with anticipation, with excitement. Because that's what the season does for us. It's a time for us to step back. It's a time for us to look at there, to ponder our lives, to look at the past. To realize who we are in this present time. And to realize that we're children of God. To realize that, first of all, we see Advent as that time where we anticipate Jesus coming to us as a little child. And that's what we're preparing for. 
We're preparing for our king to come to us, not in a situation where he's coming in riding on a, on a huge steed, but he comes in in a very meager way. In fact, he comes to us very humbly. Rather than looking at himself and puffing his chest out, he comes to us and he looks at us as sinful human beings and he bends down to us, he lowers himself to us. You know, when you speak to a child, the best way for you to speak to them is for you to bend over and to look them in the eye and talk to them this way. And that's exactly what Jesus did for us. He got on our level. He looks us in the eye. And he talks to us. And he tells us and he reminds us that you all are my beloved children. I have made you my children. And because of that, you have a reason to have hope now. You have to realize that I'm there and I'm present. And see, that's the great thing about being in the present. As we look to the present, we have to realize that we don't wander this, this dangerous world by ourselves. We're not out there by ourselves. We're not on our own. Jesus didn't send us and, and pat us on the rear end and say, Oh, you're on your own. But he's with us. In fact, our epistle lesson talks about the idea of that what they wanted to do is they wanted to see Jesus face to face. But you know what? We get to see Jesus face to face. Every time we're here in this sanctuary, we see Jesus face to face. Every time we sing a Christmas carol or, or, or a hymn, we see Jesus face to face. Every time we open the scriptures, we see Jesus face to face. And here in a few moments, you're going to receive and you're going to be able to touch our Lord and Savior, our very King. Because of his death and resurrection on the cross. When we go and we receive the Lord's Supper, we are actually receiving the very body and blood of Christ. He's here, he's present, and we can see him. We can touch him. In other words, for our present day lives, what we do is we realize that God is here, he's present, and he keeps his promise to us. You know, his promise to us on the cross was, is that I will never leave you, I will never forsake you. And that's a promise that we can take in the next operating room we go. The next time that we have a procedure. The next time that we get up and have to go under anesthesia. We can know with all confidence that Jesus is sitting right next to us. He's there with us. He gets to go places that not even your pastor can go. He gets to go places that not even your spouse can go. But he's there and he's with you. And that's a promise. And that's hope. And when we get sick, when we have to face death, when we face the death of a loved one, He's there. He's there comforting us with His Word and His presence. That when we fall short, and we will, and you do, that He's there also picking you up and saying to you, you're my beloved child, and remember, I've redeemed you through my blood. That's why I came. That's why I rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. So that they would take me and put me on that cross. So that I could make you mine. So that I could, I could give you hope. And see, that's what our present day situation is. To understand that we are God's children. And, and as God's children, He never forsakes us. He's always there with us. And, and that's His promise. And we do get to see Him face to face. We, he speaks to us. When you're here in the sanctuary, He speaks to us. And you see Him face to face with His Word. But see, it's where our hope really comes from because it's there. And it's only from that vantage point that we can truly look into the future. Because I guarantee you, for these people out in the world, the future is, is really an ugly thing. It's filled with destruction. It's filled with hopelessness. It's filled with judgment. But for God's people, we can look to the future with an excitement, with anticipation. And that's what we pre prepare our hearts for. Not only looking back and seeing when our King came to us as a little child, putting on flesh, human flesh, in order to make Himself like us, in order to understand our, our plight. 
But when we see him triumphantly coming back to gather us together. And see, that's his other promise. That's the promise he makes. He, he's, he's told us. He tells us several times in scriptures. He tells us through the words in Romans. The words that we hear many times when we're at a funeral. He says, in my, in my house there are many rooms. And I am going to prepare a place for you. And if I prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be where I am. You see, God's got a very special place for each one of you. It's a place that he himself has, has made with his hands, has crafted, and has put those wonderful touches on. For some of it, it might be hair. Some of us, it might be a little bit thinner lifeline. But no matter what it is, it's a place that God himself has created for us. And it's a place that's perfect. It's a place that will be that there will be no more sorrow. There will be no more pain. These old things will pass away. And it will only be joy. He also tells us as, as, he, talks to, as he talks to poor Thomas. And we know how Thomas is. He's the guy that says what everybody else is thinking. Right? Well, I don't know if I'm sure about this. Thomas, you know, I'm going. I've got to leave you right now. But I'm going to be, and I'm going to prepare a place for you. And I'm going to come back once that place is done, and I'm going to take you to be where I am. And you know where Thomas says, Well, gee, Lord, I don't know where you're going. How can I know? How do I know the way? He says, You know, I am the way and the truth and the life. And so that's what he does as he looks to Jesus. And see, that's what we do too. As God's people, we're able to look to Jesus. And as we look to Jesus, we realize what our future is. And it's certain in Him. Because we're children of God. And even in those times that we stumble, He brings us that forgiveness of sins that allows us to be able to wear those robes of righteousness. To be those people who are His and be able to look forward and we have hope. See, that's what we live as. That's what, what our future is. It's a future of hope. It's a future of looking forward and waiting with anticipation where the world doesn't want to see Jesus ever again. We're waiting for Jesus to come back. We're waiting for him to descend upon that cloud. We're waiting. Why doesn't he come now? He'll come. We just have to wait. And so that's what this season is about. It's about being here. It's about reflecting upon our lives. It's about doing the same thing that we do every new year. And that's to look at the past. To realize that we're sinful human beings, but yet we have a king that came to us. He came to us as a little child in Bethlehem. He went to the cross. We look to the future and realize that because of that, because he is, he is, he's laid that out before us, that he has made us his children and as his children, he promises never to forsake us, and he's with us every moment of the day. And our future is this, and it's a bright one. And we wait with anticipation. We wait for him to return and take all of us home. That's what it means. That's what Advent is about. And so as we look at it, as we look at a brand new year in the church, let us always look forward to Jesus. Let us always know that he's here and live in that confidence, in that hope, and in that joy. After all, that's all those things that are up there on those banners as you see them this, this, this season. Of course, we can't remember the best of all, the love, the love that loved us so much that he was willing to die for us. To make us his. So celebrate this season. Look with anticipation. Live in his hope. His joy. And his love. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace that passes all understanding. Keep our hearts and minds centered and focused on Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We now